All right, so we are going to look at the equations of motion for a multi-stage rocket in a uh, uniform gravitational field. Um, and so what we're going to do is just look at two different times. At time t, it has mass m traveling at speed v. And then at a later time, t plus dt, it has, it's traveling at speed v plus dv, has mass m plus dm, has ejected mass minus dm at speed v exhaust. Um, and dm is less than zero, so that it makes... Um, mathematical sense. All right, so again, using conservation of momentum, at time t, it's just uh, the momentum is mv, and at time t plus dt, it is what you see there. The term on the right is the uh, momentum of the ejected mass in the exhaust, and in the speed term is just the speed relative to the speed of the rocket. Um, dp is just the difference of the two terms above, um, and then dividing by dt, we get the rate of change of momentum, which is equal to our external force. In our case, the external force is obviously the force of gravity, so we're going to put the minus mg term there. Um, we're going to make the substitution for m dot, we're just going to say is minus k, where k is a positive constant, and m, the uh, mass as a function of time, is the initial mass minus kt. Um, so m making those substitutions and rearranging, we're then going to divide by m naught minus kt, um, then separate variables, and on the left, integrate with respect to v, and on the right, integrate with respect to t. All right, so for our velocity equation, we get um, the exhaust velocity times the natural log of the initial mass over the mass as a function of time, minus gt. Um, and integrating again, we get an equation for our y position. In both of those equations, I left out the integrating constants. I set them both equal to 0. So there's um, the initial position and speed are 0. All right, so now we're going to look at the uh, velocity of a three-stage rocket. Um, <clears throat> in the first stage, um, it's the equation that we just found a second ago. The argument of the natural log, the numerator, is the initial mass of the stage, and the denominator is the mass as a function of time. Um, so at time TS1, at the end of stage 1, um, that denominator is the final mass of the stage. Um, also, at the end of stage 1, we're going to drop off the shell of rocket one um, just because it has extra mass. And so the initial mass for stage two is going to be a little bit different. Um, so now for velocity stage two, we're going to take the speed at the end of stage one, it's that constant there, um, and then add it to uh, the same equation. We're going to, for the initial mass in stage two, um, it's just the mass at the end of stage one at time TS1 minus MR1. And also in that uh, constant right there, times k, um, and also on the g, it's t minus ts1. Um, that's just to avoid double counting the mass and also the change in speed um, that we already took into account during stage 1. All right, so at the end of uh, stage 2, at time ts2, rocket 2 is all burnt out. Um, so now the rocket is just going to coast. And so equation 3 for uh, velocity is just a kinematic equation. We get the initial velocity plus g times t minus ts2. All right, so now just as a summary of what we're going to plot, um, we have uh, v1 on the interval from 0 to ts1, and then v2 uh, is on the interval ts1 to ts2, and then v3 is just ts2 to infinity. Um, so what we just did for velocity, we're going to do again for position. Um, we're making the same substitutions for um, initial and final mass. Um, it's pretty boring, so I'm just going to flash it really quickly. Um, again, this is what we're going to plot. It's on the same time intervals as before. All right, so now to find the time of stage 1 and time of stage 2, um, we're just going to say at the end of, let's say, the first stage, uh, x percent of the initial mass has been burned in rocket 1. So we set... Um, x times m naught equal to m naught minus k t s one, and then we um, just solve for uh, t s one, and we get m times the quantity one minus x all divided by k. All right, so now to uh, look at the plots in Mathematica, I'm first just going to define all the constants. Um, g I said equal to one, just use natural units. Um, t s one I said was after thirty percent of the initial mass has been burned. Uh, we then drop off mass of rocket 1, and then at the end of stage 2, I said another 30% of the initial mass um, was burned. All right, so uh, here are the equations that we defined earlier. 
um, and this is the plot of those three equations, that first interval right there is the stage one. Um, it increases and uh, has pretty high acceleration. At the end of stage one, it drops off mass one, so it accelerates even more quickly because it has less mass to, uh, to move. Um, and then at the end of stage two, um, it's just what it looks like for free fall, so it keeps uh, traveling upward. Um, it then gets to zero and the velocity becomes negative as it falls to the ground. All right, so uh, now we have the equations that we found for uh, the y position as a function of time. Um, same time intervals as before and the same constants. Um, so here is the, the plot of a position as a function of time. Uh, during stage one, um, you can see it starts from rest, the slope is zero, and it increases rather slowly. Um, and then it drops off mass of rocket one, so during stage two, it accelerates the, uh, more quickly. Um, and it's kind of hard to see the concavity differences between stage one and two, so just below in this graph, um, stage one is plotted in red and stage two in green. So you can see that intersection point there um, and how the concavity changes just a tiny bit. Um, and it would obviously change more if mass of rocket one was a little bit more or if it had burned more fuel during the first stage. All right, so now back to um, the third stage of the rocket. You can see it's just like any kinematic equation. It uh, coasts upwards until its y velocity becomes zero and then um, it becomes negative and starts falling back to the ground. All right, so thank you for making it all the way through this incredibly interesting video. As a reward, here is a video of um, my dog from home being weird and rolling around and stuff.